You know, when we get to heaven, there's a couple of questions that, that God is not going to ask. Number one question is not going to ask people as they come in, the congregations of people, is what church did you go to? Which is something that is very, very much on people's lips. What church do you go to? And what he's going to ask pastors, or what he's not going to ask pastors is, how many were in your church? It's got nothing to do with where you go or how many you are in your church. It's whether you love Jesus or not. But what he is going to ask us is, what did you do with my son? What did you do with the call of God that I put on your life? Because I believe that every one of us are able ministers. I believe that every one of us have got giftings on our lives. We're all part of a great body which is called the body of Christ. It's called the church. It's called God's people. And I believe that every one of us have got a major part to play. And I know that it's very, very easy to balk. It's very, very easy to you know, make excuses for why. And it's very, very easy even to start a race and not finish it. Because there's a lot of things there. You might get the stitch, you might feel exhausted, or you might somebody might go past you, or somebody might do something. And, and it stops us from running the race which God has for us. Paul said these words, he said, I've run the race. I've finished the race, amen. I, I, I did the best I could. And now I know, I know that there's waiting for me something. And I, I want to say today that I want to encourage us as a people to, to dig in and, and allow the anointing, the fresh anointing oil. You see, the, the difference between the new wineskins and the old, old wineskins, all the old wineskin needed was a bit of oil, a little bit of soaking, a little bit of something that made it pliable again so it could move and stretch. And there's a lot of things that perhaps people who have been born again for a long time have got to be able to embrace. There's a lot of things that we don't need to embrace that a lot of people are embracing. We need to know what God's doing. Amen? We need the Spirit of God to touch our lives and help us. And I want to encourage you today that, that as we wait upon God, as we allow that anointing to get around our lives, and, and we might be saying, well, what's going on here? But the anointing is starting to make us pliable again. Starting to, like the old clay, and make us so as that he can make that pot that he wants to make or that vessel that he wants to make or, or whatever it is that he wants to make. And it doesn't really matter today whether you're a Brian Houston or whether you're a, a, you know, somebody else. What God's going to ask Brian, what he's going to ask you, what he's going to ask me is what did you do with what I gave you? What did you allow me to make out of your life? And I believe that God wants to make something beautiful. You know that old song we used to sing a long time ago? All I had to offer Him was brokenness and strife. But He made something beautiful out of my life. Amen? How many people can testify that God made something great out of your life? And you didn't have much to offer Him, perhaps. And I know with me that where I was coming from. So this morning I just want to share this with you. And I believe that it will challenge our lives. To be used by God. How many people want to be used by God? I believe there's something that we all have in common. We all want to be used by God. We want God to use us. Really, it's called ministry. It's ministry. Many are seeking uh, ministry. Uh, common statement that I hear as I've been around and anybody that's been a pastor or been around people or even been in church life will hear these words. The pastor doesn't uh, appreciate or understand my ministry. Anybody ever heard that? The people say these words. I want to say this. It might be a bit of a shock to you, but I do not have to understand the call of God that's on your life. I, I don't even have to really appreciate it. If I don't understand it, how can I appreciate it? But what you've got to understand is that God has put something on your life that is for you to do, amen? And, uh, and, and, and do it with all of your heart, with all of your mind. Because 
I want to tell you, most pastors aren't everything. We're just people like you. And uh, because we're different callings on different lives. And, and uh, you know, if I don't understand what you're doing, just do it anyhow. When Nancy and I started off, people didn't understand what we were doing. We were just, uh, you know, I just said to God, what can I do for you? And he said, will you go up and down the street and gather children? I didn't even realize at that stage that I should have asked anybody. I just did it. And, uh, you know, that's what started us off. Perhaps if I would have said, this is what God spoke to me to do this, the pastor might have looked at me and said, well, I don't really think that's the call of God that's on your life. You know what I mean? Anybody here? Did I try to talk like this or should I just go home and like, okay. Okay, so many people are saying, you know, a uh, common statement, the pastor doesn't always appreciate or understand my ministry, uh, but he or she really doesn't have to. You know, th- how many people know that there are some strange ministries? <laughs> eh? There are some really strange ministries. There's, there's people that walk around and they look at things and, and, and they see demons and everything. Uh, and they have this ministry of going into people's houses and, and, and checking out the demonic realm. Now, I, I really believe that that's very, very real, you know what I mean? But there's also some wackos. Wacko jacko, I mean. <laughs> I, I, I've heard of people that have had paintings that are worth tens of thousands of dollars and they come in and they see something and they say, there's a demon in that painting, you've got to burn it, you've got to destroy it. And really all it was was a fly dropping. <laughs> <laughs> but there's realities too, you know what I mean? There's realities. Uh, some people, you know, that's what they do. And, 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 and I believe, how many people know that there's got to be a lot of things that are going to be cleansed? Uh, I know that, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they go overseas, they, they buy uh, statues and different things like that. And particularly, and I've got some South Africans over here nodding. And, and I know that, that for a fact that there was a person there that had this uh, statue of a uh, thing of a um, rhinoceros. And uh, they brought it home and, and, and they, were, they were just having trouble, 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 trouble. They just had sickness and diseases and goodness knows what was going on in their household. One day the thing fell off the shelf and broke and on the inside of it was a vial of blood. They've been put in there by witch doctors and different things. You've got a lady over here that used to do a lot of demonic stuff. I remember Fred when, when you got born again and you stopped making so much money out of reading palms and so forth. <laughs> he didn't like me, he became my best friend. There's a lot of you know things there that are, that are going on that are very, very real and very, very careful, and we need people there to go in and, and discern some of this stuff, you know what I mean? But we've got to be careful that we don't, you know, it's not the wacko jackos, as I said. There are people there, some people have got, you know, uh, they want to uh, help the poor. Uh, some people, they want to deliver drug addicts. Some people want to, uh, I'm, I'm an intercessor, I love to pray, or I'm a teacher, and the list goes on and on. But in all of this stuff, it is very, 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 very important to any ministry to have the approval of the Holy Ghost upon them. We must have the approval of the Holy Spirit. It's got to be God-inspired. It's got to be God-ordained. You see, Mary, that carried Jesus, Mary was a young girl, and all of a sudden, Mary, the Spirit of God came to her, and Mary was to carry and nurture the baby Jesus. This was her call or ministry. Amazing thing with a promise that this Jesus would reign over the house of Jacob. And it's found in Luke uh, chapter uh, 1 verse 30. And it says, Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. How many people have you didn't really have this ministry? He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? You know, when you hear from God, not everyone will understand or agree with what God is saying to you. 
There are a lot of things that I don't understand. I will admit, I do not understand a lot of things that goes on. But I do understand this, that if the call of God's on it, and the anointing of God's on it, well then it will do what God says it will do, and it will bring life. Yes. Or else it can bring death. And when Mary, you know, received this ministry, when you hear from God, not everybody will understand or agree. Usually people reject or discourage you. Can you imagine, look, you've, you've got to somehow or other bring it back to, to, to understanding. Here's Mary, a young girl, and she's got a, a fiancé. And they they think they're going to get all the arrangements for the marriage. They're, they're going to get married, that's wonderful. And all of a sudden, she gets this call from the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God and starts to share, you're going to you know, conceive, you're going to bring forth. And so Mary goes up to Joseph and says, Joseph, guess what? Guess what? Do you think Joseph understood what was going on? What did he do? You know, his reaction was, well... I'm going to have to get rid of you. But I won't embarrass you. We'll do it somehow or other secretly. And we'll, you know, we'll make it up. Friend, how do you think Mary felt right now? You know, I don't know about you, but there are people there that have got different giftings on their life. And they come to somebody and they say, this is what God's called me to do. And, and you know, there's some strange things. Uh, a couple of guys here go around and put sticks in the ground the ground with, with scriptures all over them. Somebody else goes prayer walking somewhere up and down the streets and somebody else does something else and somebody else does something else. The thing is, is that I don't have to understand all that. You know what I mean? Another thing, I don't even have to get involved with that. I don't have to do it. Some people, when they get a call from God, they want me to do it. Any of you pastors, like, no, 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 I'm looking at pastors everywhere. Come on, come on. All these lies look at, but I'm getting a lot of nods. This is very interesting. I don't have to understand it, I don't have to do it, I don't have to get involved. But you have to get involved with what God has called you to do. So here we find Mary, uh, you know, she, you know, it, I, I reckon uh, Joseph would have really discouraged her. She would have felt disappointed. She would have felt, man, he doesn't understand. Not everyone will understand. It's not until you become successful that the masses will follow. Today, many worship Mary. Because of the success, because of what happened in her life. I hear a lot of people say, God said to me or God spoke to me. And after a little while, God changes his mind. How many people know God never changes his mind? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God said a lot of things, and I praise God that he never changed his mind. And I will tell you, there's a lot of things that God has spoken to you and to you and to you and to you and to me about that we may not have seen come to pass yet. But I tell you what, as sure as God made little apples, it will come to pass if you do not faint. If you don't grow weary, if you don't, you know, just say, well, that will never happen for me. Because it will happen for you if you believe. If you can believe, if I can believe everything that God has ever prophesied over my life, everything that God has ever said will happen. I want to tell you there's so many still unfulfilled prophecies. There's so many things that are still unfulfilled in the scriptures that have been that have been spoken. There are things that God said He's going to do in your lives. I want to tell you it's a time again to allow the oil of God to get on those prophetic words. It's time again to let the Spirit of God get hold of our lives and start to rise up and start to declare it and start to speak it out in Jesus' name and become the man and the woman that God wants you to become. Not the one that the devil wants you to become. Mary, man, what, what an amazing woman this woman was. But people say, no, uh, you know, God's changed his mind. But if there's one thing that I've got to say, you must have the favor of God or the approval of the Holy Spirit upon what you do for the Lord. We must have the anointing. Otherwise, when trouble comes, you'll give up. 
and trouble will come. Amen. In Luke 1.34, uh, let me just read this again. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, Listen to this, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. I want to major on this for a moment. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Friend, I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit has got to come upon the church again. The Holy Spirit has got to overshadow the church again. I don't know about you, but I want the Holy Spirit to come upon me again. I want the Holy Spirit to overshadow me. Come on, raise your hand if that's what you want today. But I just don't want another doctrine or a philosophy or a good idea. I want the mind and the will of God in my life. I want the Holy Spirit to overshadow me. I remember as I, I spoke many times, and I'll say it again, that when I was out there uh, in a children's camp, before I'd done anything for God, I put up my hand and volunteered to go to a children's camp. They gave me the job of peeling the potatoes and the pumpkin. I hate it ever since. No, it's good. But, but the thing is, is that, that I was watching there, but I was out there praying with the people at the midnight, and goodness knows what, just praying and praying, and the Holy Spirit overshadowed me. Something came down from heaven and overshadowed me. And that's why I kept went home the next week. And I went up and to, to God and I said, God, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, I want you to gather the children. A friend, to me that sounded so rude, so strange, so different, so far from my natural thinking. But because he overshadowed me, because the anointing was upon him, it wasn't too long we built a children's church to over 600 children. We had very frost, we had goodness knows what going. We had a move of God, six double-decker buses pulling kids here and there, and kids getting born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Holy Ghost overshadowed me. When the Holy Ghost overshadows you, I want to tell you, you can you can cross crocodile flooded lagoons. You can cross like the men of old, cross uh, rivers that were in flood. The supernatural power of God will sustain you. The anointing of God will take you over. It will take you through. It will take you into. It will make whatever God wants to make out of you. Because that's what God does. He doesn't change His mind. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. What an amazing statement. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. You know what? There's some things there, friends, that, that in life and in the church, when things go wrong, when things don't happen the way we think they're going to happen, when disappointment comes, there's not one person in this room that hasn't been disappointed. There's not one person here that hasn't been misunderstood. Hasn't been all these things that happen to us. But you see, with Mary, there was something that kept her. It was the, that anointing, that, that, that presence of God, that, that, that awesome overshadowing of the Holy Spirit when God came into His life, when and God came into her life in a, such a dynamic way. We, we've had uh, David speak about uh, the men's breakfast on Saturday where he spoke about going over into South America and uh, into a deep, one of the deepest, darkest prisons in the area where the, all the inmates, there was no escape for them. They, they, there was no, what do you call that thing now? No parole. You went in there, you died in there. But there was a man that went in there with the gospel and, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people got born again. Filled with the Spirit of God. And the anointing of God was so strong. And he said right in the depth of the darkest place in the world. As he walked in there. And this big old man. Strong, fat old fella. Grabbed hold of him and hugged him like nobody had ever hugged him before. And he sensed the presence of God. And the power of God. And he had an encounter with God. Kendall's been speaking about something there. As he preaches about an encounter. Friend, every one of us needs an encounter with God. And you will never have an encounter with God while you're tiptoeing through the tulips from Tiny Tim. You only have an encounter with God when you get fed, you when you get serious, when you say, God, here I am, I want to give you my whole life, I want to give you the lot, amen. You can't be in and out. This is not in and out burger. There's a place in America called In and Out Burger. They call their coffee shop In and Out, but not too many people. 
come in and they went went out. <laughs> Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. This is what kept Mary sane for 33 years. It kept us sane, waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. I want to tell you, friends, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. God will fulfill His promises. God will do what He says He will do. Oh. I reckon that's worth a shout. Yeah. 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 God's going to... Man, He's going to smack the devil. No, we're going to smack the devil up the side of the head. Yeah. He's already yeah. smacked him up the side of the head. Amen. Ruler of the nation. The world is yet to see the full release of your promise. The church in victory. Hallelujah. How many of you want to live in victory? How many of you want the Holy Spirit to overshadow you? Come on. Call on His name while He may be found. Come on, Holy Ghost. Do a work in me. Renew my mind, my heart, my soul. Make me free to be more like you in every way that I might glorify your name and that people will see. Jesus in me. And we walked in to buy a, buy a, a, what do you call it? A printer. A printer. Can you believe it? We're looking for the cheapest printer we could find. Fifty-eight dollars. Anybody got a better one? Fifty-eight bucks. This blonde Sheila walks over. Only took about a minute. Next minute she's saying, oh, I've got a lot of troubles. <laughs> I got this, I got that. Within another five minutes, Pensy led to Jesus. <laughs> we rang the pastor up the road for the better to be there. There was me there. We said, we've got this lady. She, she, when we said about God, she said, who's he? Where, where did he come from? I said, green cheese. I told the pastor, I said, there's a lady. I said, she don't know nothing. She don't know nothing about God. He said, praise God for that. <laughs> hey, praise God for that. Amen. She's green skin. I went and saw her and she said, oh, she said, it taught me everything in me to stop from crying. And those people were talking to me. Sweet friends, make me alive. Me, she said, oh, that was a lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let's get rid of the ugly and be lovely. <laughs> See, this was kept the same for 33 years, waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. Without the confirmation or the Holy Spirit, people quit. We need to be overshadowed by the Spirit of God. Amen. Yes. How many people want to be overshadowed? See, up until Jesus rose from the dead, Mary would have had to battle with doubt, unbelief. She had to wait 33 years to see the dawning of a new day. How many people know there's going to come a new day? There's a new day that is dawning. There's, there's something that's happening. There's, look, friend, you, how many people really can understand that there is something happening? Come on. Come on. Yeah, something has happened, man. Right? Come on, it's not like it was six months ago. It's not like it was 12 months ago. It's not like it was six weeks. There's something happening. There's a stirring. There's, a, there's something happening. That I believe it's a God-inspired thing. And I believe that God is calling His army. He's raising up His army. She would have to doubt. She had to wait for 33 years for the dawning of this new day. But you see, when the resurrection came, she knew it was worth it all. Uh, can I say this? That in, I've been in ministry for a long time, but I have never, ever been more excited than I am right now. There's something happening. I've seen lots of things. I, I've seen moves of God. I've seen conferences. I, you know, I've been there. I've done all. And you've got no idea. I've rubbed shoulders with all the, all the big shots and the, and the little shots and goodness knows what other shots. <laughs> Talking about less than someone. Remember going and taking him to the airport. And I was scared stiff of less than someone. I was scared stiff. I'm driving. I never drove so quietly. I drove quietly sitting there. Yeah, I took him to the airport. I took him in. Took his luggage, got his ticket. Put him into the 
he did whatever I told him to do. I said, okay, sir, I'll see you. Come back here. I said, what? Come back here. See him. Two hours. He grilled me. I got me, he couldn't. But he started talking to me about God, about the revival. Just gleaning from him and drawing from him. Friend, I want to tell you, it's time that we started to draw from the rivers, draw from that. The mighty resident will start to stir again the victims on the inside of you. The sleeping giant called the church is stirred by the fire of God and begins to rise. Amen. I want to tell you, friends, I want to see this church begin to rise. We're not here just wanting to talk good messages or this or that. We're here to stir up the spirit of God on the inside of us. We're here to go out there and into this. Go on, even if you don't want to go and buy a computer, go and go on your board. You might find that lonely, uh, that lonely person that wants Jesus. You know what, half the time is we don't know, we don't meet people, really. We've got to go to some places to meet people. Go and buy a, what is that, a printer. <laughs> when she saw, when she saw her son risen, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, she said it was worth it all. It was worth it all. It was worth it all. We're shifting, as you know, when we're having a bad day and, and we've got this stupid printer home and it still wouldn't work. <laughs> and she went up to use the computer this morning, it won't work, nothing works. <laughs> Coming home, when we, after, after we tried the printer and that wouldn't work, we had to get some documents where we needed printed badly, that's why she doesn't want to do it this morning. That wouldn't work. And then she's there and she's, she looked at me and she said, but it was worth it to get that lady saved. Yeah. Uh, it's worth it all, man. Yeah. It's worth it all. It's worth it all. It's worth it all to get that lady saved. There's another story in the Bible where the angel spoke to Zacharias, found in uh, Luke chapter 1. I'm just going to read you from verse 11. The angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. I said incest the other day. <laughs> and when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fell upon him. And the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Now, here's this man that's been praying for something for many, many years. Finally, the Spirit of God comes and says, Your prayers have been answered. God's heard you. You're going to have this child. Glory to God. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. And your, your prayers heard. Your wife will visit. Bear a son. You should call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness. And many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. And he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Glory to God, that would be a thrill. And he will turn, away, turn many from the children, many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers of the children of the disobedient uh, to, to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord then Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am old, and my wife is well advanced in years. Give me a break. There's no hope this will ever happen. <laughs> I'm talking to some people here today that have lost hope. While Jesus is alive on planet Earth, there's hope. Amen? Amen. While you're alive on planet Earth, there's hope. All this stuff that he's going to do, he said, how can this be? How, how, how is this going to happen? He said, you shall call his name, a name John. Fear came upon him. You see, what I believe God is doing today is challenging our mindsets. Some of us have got mindsets that says, I'm too old or I'm too young. You know, when I first started in the ministry, I was too young. And when I realized all of a sudden I was all too old, I missed a bit in the middle. The enemy will always 
try to get you thinking what you shouldn't think. And you've got mindsets, I have mindsets that had to be broken. My, here's this man going through the, the ritual of, of being the high priest there or whatever it was, doing the ritual, doing all the stuff, but full of unbelief. That God couldn't really answer prayers. That God didn't answer prayers. Friend, I don't want that sort of person praying for me. I want somebody that believes, amen? I want somebody that can believe that God can heal me to pray for me. I want to pray for people that believe God can heal them. That's how we get results. Zacharias, he, here he is, he says, how can it be? You see, God had to change mindsets, and I believe that's what he's doing here. Mindset, he believed, the Lord has not answered my prayer. He hasn't done it in the past, it's not going to happen now. You see, mindsets have to be smashed that do not live up to the, to the Word of God. Many believe they will never be healed. You know what? There are sick people, we could have even prayed for people here today, that deep down in their heart, they do not believe that they'll ever get healed. That's laying empty hands on empty heads. We've got to start to stir again. If Jesus said, by my stripes we're healed, we're healed. Amen. Yeah. There are people that believe that their marriages will never ever be any better and this is their lot and they have to put up with it. No friend, I want to tell you that's not the way it is. Some people say that their financial situation that they find themselves in right now, it, is, it will never work, there's nothing will change, it's finished, that's me. I'm going to live this life in poverty all my life. I've got news for you, you need to change the way you think and you've got to start believing that God wants to bless you and He wants to bless you more abundantly than you could ever imagine or think. While we don't believe it, nothing can change. Because as Phil was talking, I think, at the prayer meeting the other night uh, about that word, what's that word? Um, eh? No, the other word. Justice. 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 Amen? God is a just God. He doesn't lead you on the garden path and tell you, I'm going to bless you financially, I'm going to bless your marriage, I'm going to bless your health, I'm going to bless you this, and uh, just to say, ha, oh, look what happened, it didn't happen to her. That, that's not God. He gets joy when he sees his people uh, released, he sees joy. The Bible says that there's a party goes on in heaven when one person gets born again. God is a just God. He wants to see justice. He wants to see you delivered. He wants to take everything that the devil has stolen from your lives and he wants to make that devil pay. That's worth a bit of a hallelujah. Because yeah. there's a lot of people today and, and I've been in that same boat being smashed, crashed and bashed. The angel had to come and change his mindset to believe him. The Lord. And, and see what happened to, to him when, when this happened. Uh, he had to shut his mouth. Without the, without the approval of the Holy Spirit, without the, oh, the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, without being able to receive what God has done for us. What, what I want to tell you, there's a lot of people, though they're speaking, their lips have been sealed and there's no anointing on what they're saying. There's no Holy Ghost on what they're saying. And it's just another message. It's just another thing that, that has got information and goodness knows what else in it. But friend, I want to tell you, I want more than information. I want information. But I want information that's packed by the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of God, that's going to bring a challenge to my life, that's going to cause me to do something about it. If you haven't got the unction of the Holy Ghost, I want you to preach your friends, you might as well stay home. But please don't. <laughs> so many people that, are, that, 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 that they've lost the anointing. They've lost the presence of God. It's now excellence. 
It's now whatever. I want the Holy Spirit, amen. Yeah. I, I, I don't, we, we tried singing a song the other day that goodness knows what, but I don't know about you, but I still got blessed. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Be quiet now. Come again, you see, see Zacharias is there and, 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 the, and the situation comes and you know there's a, some other things that we've got to break is we've got to break some tradition. A lot of people call me pastor, I don't care what you call me, as long as you don't call me late for lunch. <laughs> tradition. And that, that's fine, it's okay. It's okay. That's you know, but it's okay, but let's not just be traditionalized. Let's not just be formalized and goodness knows what. Let's be free. Free. I like it. Little kids call me Neil. I don't care what you call me. Let's get rid of this stuff. Get rid of this stuff. It's got to get real. Just love, love on Jesus, man. Love Jesus. See, he had to break tradition. Because tradition says that when you have a son, you've got to call him after one of the family members. Naturally, John. I like this, I like this little bit. I just want to read a little bit more of it to see if I can. Now, Elizabeth's full of this verse 57 came for her to be delivered and she brought forth a son. When her neighbours and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day when they came to circumcise the child that they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. But his mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who was called by this name. So they made sign to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet. And he wrote, saying, His name is John. Can I tell you this? When you start to break free, when we start to break free, when Neil really starts to break free from the tradition, from the what people expect of me. Is that okay? Yes. What people expect of you. There's times when, when I've said this before, when I just want to lay on my face before God, but I think, oh man, my people think I'm crazy. So, I, for, We've got to break tradition. If you want to run around the building, run around the building. Yes. You know what I mean? Don't be stupid. If you're stupid, I'll tell you stupid. I might be wrong, but anyway. <laughs> the thing is, the minute, I want you to catch this. The, here he is. He's locked up with tradition. He's locked up with all this stuff. God sips his lip. He's, he's there. What are you going to call him? Tradition says you should call him after your own name. But his name, the angel said, call him John. And he said, his name will be called John. And the moment, friend, can catch this. The moment that he said those words, his mouth was loosed. The moment that he said those words, his mouth was loosed. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he began to prophesy. And he began to speak the word of God. Amen. I will tell you, friends, when we start breaking through some stuff, when you start breaking through the traditional things that, that have rocked you, when you start breaking through, and me, when I say you, I'm talking about me, please. When we start breaking through, we come out the front and dance. I was going to call everybody out the front this morning when we're starting to praise and worship. I thought, oh, no, I can't do that. And, and, Oh, shake up on you, Lord. Loosen me! Yeah. Get out the front and dance and shout and clap the glory of God. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is the youngest. 
The moment, the very moment he wrote on that tablet, his name shall be called John. Immediately, his mouth was loose. I don't tell you if there's ever a day preachers and people need their mouths loose. How many times have you gone up to buy a, a printer and somebody went up there and having a bad day says, Oh, I praise God. <laughs> You've got my bunny and you've got no idea how bad it is. Gout. <laughs> the moment that he said his name shall be John, immediately his mouth was loose. He began to prophesy. I don't know about you, how many people want to lose? Come on, give me a dumb thing that's not a good question. <laughs> Come on, how many people want to lose? Come on, how many people want to lose? Come on, let's stand on our feet. Come on, let's get loose in this joint, amen. Come on, stand on your feet, throw your hands in the air. Come on, give us a bit of honky tonk music up there. <laughs> Come on, a bit of dance and music. How many people want to pray? Somebody to lay hands on you. Get loose today in Jesus' name. Out of those seats and come, out of the front. come on, stand out here for the first time. You got a joke in the oven, that's already done. Don't worry about it. Come on, let's stand out here. How many people love like this? Can we just pray a prayer of dedication here? Oh my God, I want to dedicate my life to you. Come again, Lord. Stand in your presence. Holy ground. Give my life a friend. Speak to me, Father God. Let the anointing come down on all over us. Glory.